Well, I'll begin with a disclaimer. Anything I share in this class at any time along the way is not coming from your pastor. Therefore, you should discount everything that I say. You should uh, not take it too seriously. And if you have questions, you should go to your pastor. And if you don't like it, you should go to your pastor. <laughs> and if you don't like your pastor, we'll find another one. <laughs> Well, happy birthday, Jim. <clears throat> All right, um, let's begin. The last couple of classes, <clears throat> we've been going over um, uh, some aspects of uh, the process of knowing the Lord and the things that are necessary, and we've been using the tabernacle, and I have a chart up here, and I don't know how well anyone can see it from there, but it's a good chart, and we do take breaks here, so if you need to come up and see it, but basically it's the, the high priest, the tabernacle with uh, the, the entrance here, on the other side is the brazen altar, maybe I should do this. And then after the brazen altar is the the laver. And then here's the holy place, which on the left side is the, the seven branch candlestick, the golden candlestick. Here is the table of showbread. And the veil is right here. And in front of the veil is the altar of incense. And just on the other side is God. And on top of the Ark of the Covenant floating seven inches from, well, actually, I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't say. Okay. Um, so what we discussed was we started with talking about the, um, the priests, which are all from the tribe of Levi, the Levites, the priests. And we uh, discussed <clears throat> the process, um, and, and then we went, after that, we went into um, dealing with uh, the laver, or the altar, and then the laver, and um, so the process began with a group of people that were priests to the Lord, and that group of people, God gave them the tabernacle. And that tabernacle was to be set up by them. It was to be laid out and uh, uh, built up and uh, the, the spikes driven in and uh, stretched it out onto the earth, in the earth. Um, and they were the ones who hammered the spikes, not to kill because it is a picture of Christ crucified where the skins are stretched out and the, the spikes are nailed in. But not to kill the Lord, not to kill him, but it was to show the peop all the people around them and all the nations that their God was a lamb, that they had a crucified God. And once that was set up, then there was an altar immediately on the inside and, and lambs were taken. And it wasn't just lambs, but it was primarily lambs. And they were taken and individuals could come there to offer sin offerings and peace offerings and thank offerings and many different kind of offerings. But so much of the time it was lambs. And, they, and we went through the process of what that took and, and that in, an individual would literally see the process and it would be a pretty bloody process and and they would see what would happen to the lamb on their behalf um, and then we moved to the laver and then they moved to the laver and we moved to it next and there at the laver which was basically a big bowl that was made out of this uh, 
can see it there, it was made out of brass, polished brass, and that was like a mirror. And with the water, they were able to wash something away, spots and blemishes. But with the mirror, they were able to see, and we went through the New Testament scriptures that talk about this, they were able to see Jesus. They were able to comprehend that not just the la not just not just Jesus was stressed out and and openly shown to everyone so that they would understand that their God was Christ crucified, that their God was a crucified God, that their God was a lamb when you came to the altar and he died for you. But now there's a whole new thing going on with this labor. Now, when you look in there, you're not seeing you, you're seeing him. <clears throat> you see him and you're changed into that same image from glory to glory. And so a, a process begins there that now starts including us. And then you're gonna go into the Holy of Holies and that's where you're gonna deal with this other, other stuff. But the, the beginning part is this group of priests, this group of people that have something of the Lord's heart. Uh, in fact, well, um, uh, turn with me to Numbers chapter one and we'll look at this kind of amazing thing of what it says about these who are priests or Levites and what they carry for the Lord. Numbers 1, and we'll start at verse 49. <clears throat> Numbers 1, 49. Only thou shalt not number the tribe of Levi, neither take the sum of them among the children of Israel. And the reason is, is because it, in the New Testament, there's no need to number that, but that means that anyone can come in if they will. You, we're all supposed to be priests, but I don't believe that we all function as priests. We, you know, we're not Catholic priests. We're not, we're not even Jewish priests. We're not even Aaronic priests, the priests of the Aaron priesthood. We are a different kind of priest. <clears throat> and uh, verse 50, but thou shalt appoint the Levites over the tabernacle of testimony and over all the vessels thereof. And so here they are. They're given that building, that habitation of God. They're, they are given responsibility to take it, to move it, to set it up, to when they set it up, to, to do it properly and according to the Lord's heart. And, uh, and this, is, this is all huge stuff. And over the vessels thereof and over all things that belong to it, so this is the Lord, and this is the Lord's habitation. And their heart is for the Lord, not, you know, not just the habitation, but to make it according to the pattern. Um, and so all that belongs to it, they shall bear the tabernacle. They bear Christ crucified. They bear him where they're at, and they bear him where they go, and they bear him. And you know, Jesus is the one who said, you know, take up your cross and follow me. And that's what the Levites are doing. They're taking up this reality of Christ crucified and they are taking him wherever they go, but they're not going where they want to go. They're following the cloud by day and the fire by night. <clears throat> and so um, uh, they shall bear the tabernacle and all the vessels thereof and they shall minister unto it. Is that amazing? That's, that's memorial ministry, folks. There it is. There it is. They don't just take care of it. It's not just stuff. They minister to it. But they're not ministering to it. In their hearts, they're supposed to minister to Christ crucified. They're supposed to minister to the Lamb and all that he has set up. Um, and shall encamp round about the tabernacle so they all have to get around it in other words if you if you encamp round about something something's in the middle something central to your sight 
to the door that you enter and exit out of your home. It is, it is to him. It is to him. And the New Testament says all things are to him and through him and by him all of it consists. And he's the head of the church. <clears throat> uh, and they, and shall the camp round about the tabernacle? And when the tabernacle setteth forward, the Levites shall take it down. And when the tabernacle is to be pitched, the Levites shall set it up. And the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death. And the children of Israel shall pit. Well, let's go back to that one. And the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death. What is, what is this? This is a sacred calling to be able to minister to the Lord like this. This is not, it's not to be taken lightly. You know, I mean, it's not. It is a sacred thing that the Lord would open himself up to allow humans. You know, I was thinking about that. A few days ago, actually, that, you know, it said, um, what was, I think it was Paul and, and uh, Barnabas or some of them, they were laying hands on people to receive the Holy Spirit. And I thought, how amazing are we that we, that's just a religious thing, that God himself would allow human hands on someone for them to get the Holy Spirit. Oh my God! We don't even we go. Well, let's lay hands on me. Rub it up, rub it Sorry, rub it up, <laughs> You know that that we. You know, for us, it's a ritual, and it's oh, uh, this is the method God wants to use. But it's human hands that are laid on someone that they could actually get the third person of God. Oh my Lord. And if, uh, and to whatever degree we comprehend that, it's just like, what a, I mean, that's God condescending yes. to us, to allowing our hands to bring some, forth something that is godly, God, that is of him. Praise the Lord. And, uh, and when the tabernacle is pitched, the Levites shall set it up, and the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death, because the Lord is not looking for people to go through a class and qualify to be a priest. He's looking for those that have a certain heart. Now, I, I'm, I, I know this, at least on this small thing that I've been going through the scriptures and looking at God's heart in relationship to memorial ministry and ministry that does not have at its heart his heart. And it's just powerful to me. And the prophecies about it and what, what's, what God likes and what God doesn't like just carry right on through. They never cease because that's the way he is. Because that's the way his heart is. See, he's not... His heart's not going to change. His being is not going to change. And so a stranger coming nigh is, is, it doesn't have the same heart. You know, you'd say, well, well, that shouldn't make a difference, Lord. Why be so picky? You should just let anybody do what they want to do, you know, and, you know, for you. It doesn't matter if their heart's in it or not. The important thing is, is that they, that the job get done. How about that? Does that sound American? Excuse me, does that sound like the U.S.? It may not sound like South Americans. <laughs> just, let's just get the job done. And if you can take the courses and da-da-da-da and qualify, get in there and do it. But see, he's different than us. He's different than us. There are things that matter to him that we don't even take into consideration. We don't even take into consideration. We just do it. I'll do it to the glory of God. And he's going, you're a stranger to me. You know? You're, you're, the, the, the spirit that you have is strange to me. The thoughts you have in the process, that's strange to me. What, what I want is 
And, you know, it always comes back to that one after my kind. One that wants me, one after my kind, one that wants me and wants to be with me and wants to be one with me. Well, that would, that's going to take a cross to get there. Do you understand that? That's going to take an altar right here for sure. And then everything else that you go to after, that's going to be built on that altar. I mean, the, the fire off of that altar, it comes in here and it lights the seven branch candlestick. Did you know that? The fire off of that altar lights the altar of incense. It's that altar fire that's on things that have moved forward, that remain. See, there are things that remain, and there are things that won't remain. All right, so let's finish this. Um, And verse 52, and the children of Israel shall pitch their tents every man by his own camp and every man by his own standard, by his own standard. Every man pitch your tent by your own standard. What is your standard that you measure everything by? Throughout their host. But, but there's, a, there's somebody somebody that's taking this different differently but the Levites shall pitch around the tabernacle of testimony why that there be no wrath upon everybody else that isn't pitched around him you can pitch your tent by your own standard and thank God there'll be priests who will be with the Lord and will stand in the gap because that's really I mean, the, the priest's first job is to have the desires, the intentions of the heart of God. That's first. And the second thing is to minister on behalf of the people. But what do they minister? See, that's the key. We go, okay, I'm just ministering to the people. Well, memorial ministry priests minister the lamb they minister the cross they minister you see what i mean in other words that's still the heart of god offer a lamb offer me in their place i'm just ministering to you no you're ministering christ to them <laughs> it's a big difference and just well let's go kill a lamb then you're off the hook go that isn't it that's not the spirit of the thing. That's not what's going on. That there be no wrath upon the congregation of the children of Israel, and the Levites shall keep the charge of the tabernacle of testimony. <clears throat> All right, so um, I was thinking about the Levites and the preciousness of being able to do this. And I remembered something in Genesis. So turn with me real quick to Genesis. And this may, three minutes. Yes, ma'am. I'm sure we'll do it this time. Genesis 49, verse 5 through 7. Because <clears throat> you need to hear this. Not, you need to hear this unbroken. Genesis 49, verse 5 through 7. <clears throat> Simeon and Levi are brethren, instruments of cruelty. It's talking about the tribe of Levi, instruments of cruelty. This is Jacob's prophecy over his kids. Instruments of cruelty are, are in their habitations. O oh, my soul, come not thou into their secret, unto their assembly. Mine honor, be not thou united for in their anger they slew a man, and in their self-will they dig down a wall. Cursed be their anger, for it was fierce, and their wrath, for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. All right, so this is, this is, the, this is the way God viewed them at this point. And so it says, God, God's talking here. And he's saying, you know, I'm not going to come into their secret. And I'm not going to be united into their assembly. So you say, well, what, 
what, how did the big change come about? Well, while God wouldn't join to that, God could have them join to him in his secret and in his assembly. Amen? That's the plan. They were, they were, this is what they were by human nature. They were instruments of cruelty. And now in oneness, they are instruments of the most holy God. Is that amazing? Hallelujah. That's a big contrast to what we were by nature and what we are by oneness. Praise God. All right. So we're going to stop. <laughs> Well, Carol, Kelly's holding up a zero, which is uh, kind of like at the Olympics, how good you do. <laughs> All right, let's, let's quit, take a little break, and we'll come back. <laughs>